Hi everyone, this is Dr. Prabhu Patel and today we're going to talk about general medicine. See, general medicine is taught to us in the third year and we all know how we study it. We only study it during the professional times. We do not study as it is not our subject. That's just the case with it. And even I remember attending my postings. I used to just go there, get to this, get to a sister and get my attendance recorded and they just, then just go back to my room and sleep. That's how I attended my one year post, one month posting of general medicine in third year. And I think you guys are doing the same. But uh, it's quite important when it comes to NEET MDS. So you need to remember a lot. A lot of data is needed to answer those MCQs in the exam. So I'm here to help you out with that. Without wasting any time, let's begin. See, it comes for at least 15 to 16, sometimes more MCQs are there. Like this time they gave, I think, around 18 MCQs of general medicine. And only those who those people can answer who read it thoroughly, the clinical features and many more things. So without wasting any time, let's move on to the next part of the video. That is the books that you should refer. See, many books are there. See, you don't need the in-depth data, you just need some few clinical points, some key points of every disease and topic. See, I used AK Tripathi, it was my go-to book. You can also use, use Chug if you want. I studied, studied AK Tripathi during my UG time, so I used AK Tripathi. Books like Davidson or Peterson can also be referred only when you cannot find the answer in AK Tripathi. Sometimes some chart, sometimes some value, you can see that from Davidson. I had a PDF for Davidson, so I used that. Then in Dental Pulse, Dental Pulse, the synopsis has most of the charts for, I think like the CSF findings are there, then the auscultation points are there. There are charts, so you need to learn those. It will help you to solve many MCQs. Moving on, moving on to the topics. Topics, the important topics that you need to learn for general medicine. See. For all the topics, for everything, just remember these things, these four, four or five things that you need to remember and you will ace general medicine easily. See, for every disease, you have to remember the causes. What are the causes? The commonest cause you have to remember. Don't remember all the causes. Just remember the commonest cause. Specific clinical features. The non-specific ones are the fever, diarrhea, vomiting. You know that. You, you have been writing that in the professionalism. Don't write it here. You have to remember the specific clinical feature that defines a disease like the nephro nephrotic syndrome you know there is albuminaria you remember that then moving on most common types what are the most common types of that disease you have to remember that specific signs and symptoms investigation what is the gold standard investigation that dif that can diagnose a disease there are many gold standard investigations for different diseases you have to remember that and the treatment protocol for treatment treatment part is less important as it is also taught in the pharma one so focus on the above moving on the first topic that is git see in 2024 git was asked quite extensively before that it was not asked so much only one question used to came this time there were around i think four to five questions so you need to learn this see general examination murphy's sign you have to remember pain in the left hypochondrium pain in the right hypochondrium what kind of pain is there according to location you have to remember like the pain in the left hypochondrium is caused by spleen pain then the pain in the right hypochondrium denotes liver pain moving on the topics inside git gastritis peptic ulcer the difference between gastric ulcer and peptic ulcer very important diarrhea the organisms causing diarrhea food poisoning in food poisoning you have to remember the timing the poisoning occurs the organism causing it and the food material that is linked to that organism malabsorption differences between Crohn's and colitis these are bowel disease you have to remember that in liver liver you have to remember the normal values of the LFT serum bilirubin conjugated unconjugated blood ammonia serum bilirubin and AST AL you have to remember the normal values see in exam what they do they just give the values and say what kind of disease they have so you have to denote from the values it is pre-hepatic hepatic or post-hepatic jaundice you have you can only denote from these values so you have to remember the normal ranges of these values jaundice pre-hepatic hepatic post-hepatic hepatitis b classification of all the hepatitis councilman bodies cirrhosis micronodular macronodular lenox 
the clinical feature, lab diagnosis and treatment you have to remember for cirrhosis, portal hypertension, portal system, Bacchiari syndrome, ascites, the amount, the value, that is the amount of fluid that is present in the abdomen that denotes ascites you have to remember which is clinically di diagnosable. Moving on, see values are very important for general medicine you have to remember. As I told, they, are ju they just give the values and ask the MCQs. Moving on to the next, op next topic that is renal disorder. See nephrotic and nephritic syndrome you have to remember. Just read it like a difference and you will remember it properly. In nephrotic you have to remember minimal change disease. In nephritic rapidly progressing glomerulonephritis you have to remember. Then acute renal failure and chronic renal failure. Classification of chronic renal failure was asked in 2024. Good pasture syndrome and Alpert syndrome. Then, yeah, one more topic treatment for hyperkalemia with ECG changes. I'll put up the I'll put up the chart that I made in the video. Don't worry. Then the next topic is nervous disorders. Epilepsy, the classification and the treatment protocol for the epilepsy, status epilepticus, and what are the drugs given? You have to remember that. Meningitis. See, for meningitis, there is a chart. I'll try to put up in the video age wise and organism wise chart there is csf findings csf findings the question for csf findings came this year there was i think tuber tubercular meningitis it was asked the the chart consists of normal findings bacteria tubercular and viral and fungal kernigs and bradzinski sign you have to remember for meningitis difference between spasticity and rigidity syringomyelia intracranial hemorrhage like subarachnoid and intracerebral you have to remember what are those from where they bleed and also the epidural hemorrhage alzheimer parkinson's millard gubler syndrome wallenberg syndrome multiple sclerosis myasthenia gravis duchenne muscular dystrophy see it is a genetic disease you have to remember is it recessive is it dominant you have to remember that frederick's ataxia dysdidoconasia cerebral dysfunctions lambert eaton syndrome and also the brown sequorat syndrome you have to remember all these syndromes just a basic idea how are they caused what nerves are affected and what are the clinical features you have to remember them moving on to the next topic that is endocrine and metabolic disease hypothyroidism hyperthyroidism and mixed edema you have to remember calcium metabolic disease hypocalcemia in hypocalcemia you have to remember two signs that is trousseau's and chostic signs hypercalcemia you have to remember also the treatment for it pituitary gland based acromegaly gigantism just a basic idea of them then addison's disease very important you have to remember that what it is how it looks you have to remember that cushing syndrome very important you have to remember the same hpa axis hypothalamus pituitary adrenal axis you have to remember what it is how it affects the disease Diabetes. See, diabetes is a very important topic. It will come in multiple subjects like it will come in general medicine, it will come in pharmacology, it will also come in periodontology and oral pathology. So you have to remember diabetes, what diseases are linked to it. You have to remember everything about diabetes, even the drugs and the complications. You have to remember everything about diabetes. Even in HIV, diabetes plays a role. So you have to remember diabetes properly. And the last part, that is the Kohn's disease. Moving on, infections. The next topic is infections. See, the disease I am telling you have, the disease I am going to tell, you have to remember the organism, features, the site of infection and the specific feature that occur in the oral cavity. You have to remember for these diseases. Measles, mumps, Guillain Barr, chicken box, herpes zoster, herpes simplex virus, diphtheria and yeah, these diseases you have to remember the above points. For typhoid fever, see typhoid is very important. You have to remember the clinical feature and investigation. See, investigation according to the week, the investigation changes. Like the first week, it is for blood culture. Second occurs antigen antibody testing. Then third week, it becomes stool culture. Then fourth week, it becomes urine culture. So you have to remember it goes like BASU, B-A-S-U, blood culture, antibody culture, stool culture, and urine culture. It is, it is taught like that and I learned it like that. Moving on syphilis. Syphilis is very important. There are classifications for primary, secondary, tertiary, latent, neurosyphilis. You have to remember what are the features, what and how it occurs. See for primary it is 
painless canker then secondary it is nail drag ulcer tertiary is gamma and neurosyphilis argyle robertson pupil and charcot joints are seen and also the congenital syphilis you have to remember interstitial keratitis is seen mulberry molars are seen you have to remember the amebiasis HIV AIDS the oral manifestation of HIV AIDS AIDS you have to remember and also the drug regime pharmacology the drug regime for HIV AIDS is very important it is quite frequently asked you have to remember that leprosy oshi bachelory and multi bachelory leprosy you have to remember tuberculoid and lepromatous leprosy you have to remember what is the difference between the two moving on to the next topic that is hematology see normal cbc values you have to remember then diseases are the iron deficiency anemia plummer wenson syndrome megaloblastic pernicious anemia aplastic anemia for thalassemia you have to remember the two alpha thalassemia and beta thalassemia how are they caused what is the genetics of it what are the clinical feature and what are the types you have to remember that for leukemia all cll aml cml that is that is chronic myeloid leukemia you have to remember acute myeloid leukemia you have to remember you have to remember see there is a chart in pulse in i think the oral pathology synopsis there is a chart for all cml all cml just see that it's sufficient for you moving on purpura von willebrand disease hemophilia type a b c what is missing in type a what is what factor is missing in type b what factor is missing in type c you have to remember then splenomegaly and massive splenomegaly I made a sticky note. I'll put it up in the video. Just look at that, and that's sufficient for you. Hemolysis. There is a classification. Just look at that. And moving on, respiratory disorder. See, respiratory disorder is an important topic. You have to remember the respiratory disorders properly. Lobes of the lungs. Very important. You need to know how many lobes are in the left lung, how many lobes are in the right lung. What is the proper anatomy of the lung? Moving on, some basic info. types of sputum and with disease it is seen dyspnea acute or chronic cough acute or chronic in which disease they are seen hemoptysis versus hemitemesis how they look what is the appearance from where they occur strider shape of the chest like for the shape of the chest in copd barrel shaped chest is seen so you need to know what are the shapes of the chest in various diseases pain is the pain cardiac origin or from the pleural origin you need to know what kind of pain and differentiate it properly ko small breathing you need to know it is seen in diabetes mostly and also other disease you have to remember percussion dull percussion stony dull that is seen in pleural effusion hyper resonance that is seen in pneumothorax or emphysema you have to remember these basic points moving on the difference between the obstructive and the restrictive lung disease you have to remember it it is very important and they just give the disease and ask is it an obstructive or a restrictive disease so there is a mnemonic i made cabbi c a b b e that is cystic fibrosis asthma bronchiectasis bronchitis and emphysema i made it like that so the obstructive diseases become cabbi and the remaining are the restrictive i remembered it like that you can use it too moving on pneumonia for pneumonia you have to remember the classification clinical feature organism causing pneumonia at various ages and treatment lung abscess lung abscess bronchiectasis asthma the pathological lining pathological changes that occurs in the alveoli you have to remember that copd copd is very important you have to learn that it consists of two parts that is bronchitis and emphysema pink puffer for emphysema and blue bloaters for bronchitis there is a beautiful diagram just search it online pink puffers or blue bloaters you can get that diagram and see it i'll try to pin it up pin it up in the video for tb you have to remember the classification drug clinical features tb is very important and frequently asked in pharma there is whole regime of tuberculosis drugs you have to remember that pleural diseases pleurisy pleural effusion pneumothorax for pneumothorax you need to know the management of various pneumothorax like for tension pneumothorax you have to remember it is an emergency 16 to 18 g cannula is inserted in the second intercostal space in the mid clavicular line to make it into a open pneumothorax then the open pneumothorax it is treated by a three sided occlusive dressing you have to remember these 
then the last one is bronchogenic carcinoma you have to remember yeah one more thing in lung disorder you have you also have to remember about dppc that is the lung surfactant from where it is uh, secreted and how it functions in the lung so you have to remember that moving on the most important topic of the general medicine that is cardiovascular system auscultation levels there is a chart about the auscultation level in the pulse just refer that s1 s2 s3 s4 levels then murmurs there is murmurs chart you have to see them then first is acute rheumatic fever jones criteria in this it's very important major minor you have to remember what are the major criteria what are the minor criteria just remember them rheumatic valvular heart disease mitral stenosis mitral regurgitation aortic stenosis aortic regurgitation there are graphs for mitral stenosis regurgitation that is like the end diastolic value volume increases or decreases ejection volume increases or decreases just search online or i'll put up it in the put it up in the video just see them then infective endocarditis organisms you have to remember and the dukes criteria i think the dukes criteria was asked in the 2024 question ischemic heart disease stable angina characteristic of anginal pain you have to remember unstable angina myocardial infarction very important of topic you have to remember the treatment protocol it goes like mona that is morphine o2 nitroglycerin and aspirin i remember that like that moving on heart failure pulmonary edema due to cardiogenic cause congenital heart disease you have to remember the cyanotic and the acyanotic ones acyanotic are the asd that is atrial septal defect vsd ventricular septal defect and pda patent ductus arteriosus and cyanotic ones are the tetralogy of fallot you have to remember arrhythmias arrhythmias you can learn but not so important and synco see difference between the peripheral and the central cyanosis you have to remember that moving on some miscellaneous topics that i added at the end for example difference between the exudate and transudate then the injury on the basis of the nerve injury median nerve injury radial nerve injury and the ulnar nerve injury what type of hand shape they make for example median nerve injury makes the ape hand radial nerve injury forms the wrist drop and ulnar nerve injury forms the claw shaped hand respiratory failure types you have to remember the type 1 type 2 type 3 type 4 all four respiratory failures abg analysis you have to remember these concepts on the mcv mch mchc what are these what are the normal values and how are they affected according to various diseases you have to remember them moving on yeah these are all the topics that are the most important and this will be sufficient for your general medicine just ace them and you will be good to go see the most important of them all is the cardiovascular system number 1 number 2 is the respiratory one and according to me number 3 is the infection one see these three are the most important topics you have to remember them moving on some some points you need some tips you need for acing general medicine see in general medicine you have to focus on the key points of every disease there is a differentiating point that you will see when you are studying just remember that and you will be good to go do as many mcqs for general medicine as possible this will give a rough idea of what is asked in the exam and watch what you actually need to learn see pictures online there are i think pictures that denote like for addison disease there is a picture like a diagram diagram that denotes that there is bronze color this is this is that so you need to learn it will give a give you a visual memory how the disease looks for general medicine you need to do proper revision and i think uh two months yeah for 45 days revision every 45 days general medicine will be good to go so that's all for general medicine and uh, i'll end the video here thank you for watching